when a person can only do teshuvah, can only repent in this world. Once a person leaves this world after 120 years, there's no more time to repent, which is why this world over here is so beautiful and so awesome. Because every moment while you're in this world, you can still fix what you did. But once the lights go out, once the candle is gone, and Allah Ma'ala, there's no more fixing. Which is why a person should utilize every day that Hashem gave him to do teshuvah and repent. But once a person leaves this world, the way you left, that's how you're going to stay in the next world. Which means, let's say a person in this world, the way the sfarim began down, always cursed. A person always had nivul peh. La'atid lavo is also going to have nivul peh. He's also going to curse in the next world until everything fixes up. You know, there's a famous story from Rechon and Wasim and Hashem in Komdamo, Zechet There was a famous dibuk in the time of the Chofetz Chaim in Raden. A dibuk in English, I don't know how to say it, figure it out. But a dibuk is basically a lost soul who left this world, who enters a human body while they're alive in this world and bothers them. It exists. So the famous story with the Chofetz Chaim and the dibuk was that there was a dibuk in a lady in the city of Raden. Some neshama entered her that was roaming around the world. Some soul entered her body and bothered her. And her stomach was going up and down and making weird noises and hand motions. Very scary stuff. So all the rabbis in the town got into one room. And one of them was B'chon Wasim. And the Chafetz Chaim wasn't there yet. And they asked the dibuk, they asked this neshama coming from this lady's uh, body. They asked, they had a conversation with this soul that was roaming around. And they asked, who are you? Where were you before this? Before you passed away? Why did you enter this lady's body? Why are you bonding? They literally had a conversation with the soul. You can have conversations with neshamot, by the way, to this day. The neshama, the soul answered, B'chon HaWasimin, that I was a lady, and I did X, Y, and Z as a sin before I passed away. And my punishment is not even going to Gehenom. I can't even go to Gehenom. I don't even have the zikhut to merit to go to Gehenna. My punishment is to roam around the world doing nothing, which is the worst yisulim, the worst pain possible, not to know what's next, not to know where you are. Going to Gehenna as a zikhut could, could erase your avirot to become a different type of soul. But my sin was so bad, that even going to Gehenna right now, I don't even have the merit to go to, and I'm just roaming around and it's extremely painful. And the reason why I came down to this body, is because this lady, I was, able, I was able to enter her body because she had a cup of water without saying shehakol niyabi dvaro. So because she didn't say shehakol niyabi dvaro, the proper bracha, before she had the cup of water, I had a chance to get into her. Obviously this is deep stuff, and obviously there's many reasons that we don't understand. But this, this is how the famous story goes. Suddenly, the soul that Rabbi Chana Wasim started to have a conversation was started cursing like nivul pet. They didn't specify what type of curses in the story, but they said there was nivul pet. And Rabbi Chanan asked the soul, asked the neshama, why are you cursing? Why, why are you saying nivul pet? And the neshama answered Rabbi Chana something very, very scary and spooky. He says, what do you mean? I always cursed my whole life. He tells, yeah, but right now you went to the next world. Why are you still cursing? You know it's disgusting. You know it's evil. You know it's bad. Now you saw the light. Why are you still cursing even after you passed away? The soul answered Rabbi Chana, you don't understand. Once you leave this world, you stay the way you are even afterwards. You don't change. You don't change unless you go to Gehenom and it erases everything from a person. But you are who you are when you pass away. So I'm still cursing because I cursed even while I was alive. And I did not do teshuvah. I didn't repent before I passed away.